Throughout gaming history, there have been many copycats. Most of them fail, but the ones that succeed will not necessarily call themselves copycats. They would say that they borrowed or were heavily inspired by. And since From Software exploded with their Soulsborns games, there have been a ton of copycats. And rightfully so, they basically damn created a whole new subgenre. I must admit, I'm not going to sit here and be a poser for y'all. I am not a Soulsborne player. I tried Dark Souls, but really didn't give it a fair shake. Same with Bloodborne. I thought they were too hard and no fun, so I just quit. But I have admired every Soulsborne game from afar, like a kid who's too young to ride a roller coaster. Just because the worlds they created are just so interesting. I don't think I have the patience for those games. The failing over and over again really gets to me. In other words, I'm a total noob. So when I heard that they were going to make a new dark and dingy take on the Pinocchio tale, I was so ecstatic. My only concern was the fact that it's a Souls-like, but my hype was so high that I didn't let that deter me. So let's take a look at Liza P. From a noob's perspective. In Liza P, you play as Pinocchio. Not quite that one, or that one, especially not that one. More like a Timothy Chalamet one, yeah. Inspired by Collodi's novel, it tells the story of P, a robot puppet boy who is special from the other puppets because he can lie. This ultimately plays a big part in the ending you get. In the city of Krat, puppets were invented to help around the city, under the rule that they must obey all commands of their creators. And at the forefront of this was legendary inventor Geppetto, P's papa. The puppets one day bugged out and just started killing and attacking most of Krat's humans. So now it's up to us to liberate Krat from the puppets. While the story is interesting, it's not really what makes you stick around. You're not bombarded with cutscenes or heavy explanation dumps of what to do next. Your safe house, if you will, is the Hotel Krat. This beautiful building that you will be slowly start filling in with people who will sell items and upgrades to pee. And it's with these interactions that you will start filling in bits and pieces of the story. Of course, along with story cutscenes and all. But what made me stick around and made me keep pushing through is the setting. This dank, dark, and dingy Victorian style is amazing. The detail they cram in the level is just wild. You can see the devastation the puppets created. The whole style and vibe the game has of hopelessness and ruin is truly felt. The enemy design of each puppet is great. Some do repeat you will have like the officer puppet, but it's given a different weapon and attacks to keep it fresh. It truly created a whole new version of this legendary tale. And I think it all comes nicely with the music as well. Of course, there's some characters you will recognize. I do enjoy the occasional, oh, it's that guy moment. The game is linear, but the setting makes you want to explore every corner. You will end up opening shortcuts that when you die, you can use to get where you need to go much faster. I just love the level design as well. It all connects with itself very nicely. The fire pits here are stargazers, and with it, you can teleport to any other stargazer and the hotel. P has interchangeable mechanical arms that you can modify and upgrade. I enjoyed the variety that you get and trying to figure out what works best, not only for you, but in certain boss fights is actually pretty fun. There is a basic skill tree as well, offering more health, stamina, extra dodging, stuff like that. P stats are very Souls-like. The whole game is about playstyle. So as a noob, I don't even know what my playstyle is. So the more I play, the more I start to figure out what that is. And I start to mold my playstyle and subsequently upgrade P to that playstyle. The biggest part of this are the weapons. There are two parts to each weapon, the blade and the hilt, and you can upgrade these separately. Some come with effects and bonus stats, and you can actually mix and match different hilts and blades to see what fits for you. So it took me a while to figure out that I don't like the tank feeling. I'm too slow, so the big bulky weapons aren't for me. And the dagger weapons, they don't feel right for me either. They feel kind of weak and don't deal enough damage. So the sword light weapons gave me the balance that I like and felt comfortable with. So I can take the blade of a big, powerful, badass weapon and pair it with a sword handle, giving me the ability I'm comfortable with. Each weapon has a durability, but I don't think that this really became a huge factor for me. You can also infuse weapons with different effects on the fly for a short period of time. And I thought that was really cool. Each weapon comes with a cool attack or buff you can do as well that you can see right over here. And there are also a ton of items to help you out as well. I did love the healing mechanics. So you have a certain amount of cells you can use to recuperate. And when you run out, you actually have to build one back by attacking. There isn't an armor system, but you can change into outfits and put on masks that are purely cosmetic and they're pretty cool. And I appreciated it. So as a noob, the gameplay really does take time getting used to. I didn't feel comfortable in my abilities until like halfway through the game. That's probably because by then I had actually established my playstyle and molded P to more of my liking. 
But I feel like the main thing with these games is having a good sense of range. In the beginning, I struggle with this a lot. And that just comes down to being familiar with the weapon. Every move in combat must be calculated and precise. You can't just start flailing around. First off, you can't because of the stamina meter, but also because it opens you up to the enemy's attacks. So whether they're light attacks or strong ones, making sure that whatever you're gonna do is actually gonna hit them is pretty important. It also took some time for me to understand this as well. You can't actually cancel an attack. And because it takes P a second to perform the action you want him to, if you press the button to strike, He's gonna strike so if after you press it you want to immediately dodge he won't until he's finished with his attack which led to me getting hit a lot so patience is a huge factor finding your spot to strike reading the enemy for an opening figure out what works for you if it's a dodge or a perfect time block or a normal block figuring all this out is key i like that if you block you lose some health but if you start hitting them right back before you get hit you regain it so all these little things come into play with the mini bosses and especially the boss fights creature design for these is great they're all creepy nasty looking and certainly make you feel a type of way after you see them around the corner or in a cinematic cutscene before the fight and each fight can feel unique because they're basically little puzzles trying to figure out your best strategy to take them down now my fellow noobs you will die a lot this game is very hard very rarely did i just rock up on a boss and beat him the first try and when i did the bastard just transformed into the second phase and whooped my ass so the game requires you to be resilient and just keep trying over and 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 over again the game is only 11 chapters long. It's not like the levels are super huge and complicated, but it's the amount of death that you're going to have that will be draining your hours. But just beating someone you've been working on for hours just feels amazing. He's done it! I know this is the rush Souls fans love and what makes the Soul series great. It's like a drug. But again, to achieve this, you must not give up. And in Lies of P, the setting, the environments, the atmosphere, the level design, the enemy design, the intrigue of what actually lies ahead is what made it easy for me not to give up. I'm sure this is going to hold off Bloodborne fans at least a little until Bloodborne 2 comes out, if it ever. And I also believe noobs should actually try it out for themselves. So if you're a noob or a Souls veteran and this video was helpful or entertaining, please drop a like and consider subscribing. And for the Soulsborne veterans out there who have actually played Lies of P, how close is it to Bloodborne actually? Should I get into the series? Am I worthy? Please educate me down in the comments. Thank you guys for watching and remember to always and forever, you do you.